How do you punch hard? So there's a bunch of different things that are gonna go into how to punch with your maximum amount of force your personal body can generate. The theory we're gonna be discussing today is the theory of weight transfer. Contrary to popular belief, including my own belief for much of my professional career, your punching power doesn't really have as much to do with your muscles as you think it does. It's a whole lot more your skeleton. The organization of your joints and your weight. Imagine you're a 100 pound person, right? That person couldn't punch hard, they're only 100 pounds. Drop 100 pounds on your head. Drop it on your foot. It's gonna hurt, right? If you dropped a 100 pound sledgehammer on somebody's head, bro, their head's blown up, right? Blood splatter everywhere. If you can find a way to take all of your weight or as much of your weight as possible and then whip that through your fist into the target, that's most of how you punch really, really, really hard. How do we do that? First of all, we have to be extremely balanced. You can whip a whole bunch of power, but lose balance and be easy to counter. And you can see this really easily by looking at any street fighter that's powerful throw an overhand, because usually that's what they're throwing, right? People that are untrained can still punch hard a lot of the time because they don't try to catch themselves. They just go all in on it. They'll just go bang. Right, and it's a pretty heavy shot. Bang! So it's a hard punch, but it's not. It's not. It's not what you want to. What you want to do? You want to make sure that you're still keeping your head over your legs. So your head should not go anywhere other outside. Your head should not go anywhere outside your knee line. You have this amount of space to work with. To start with. Give yourself as much room as possible. Meaning, start your head over top of your back knee. Like this. My head is over that back leg. Now, I'm gonna drive out of that leg with my core on and rotate my head all the way to that front knee. Okay, and you can check how much weight is over, that, over top of that leg by lifting up the other leg. Right? If you're like this, which I was for so much of my career, I, I would throw my, my right hand like that. If I try to take this back foot off, right, I'm gonna fall down. So if your head stops in the middle of your feet like that, you're not using all of the weight that you have and you're not gonna be as powerful as you could be. Instead of stopping your weight here, continue it until it's over top of that knee. Once it's over top of your knee, try to pick up that back foot. If you don't feel yourself falling down really quickly, then you're doing something right. Now, we also need to make sure that with our weight over top of that leg, we, we're not falling forward because that's usually what the street fighter does, right? The street fighter throws that overhand and instead of stopping here, he goes to here. Weight in the heel, weight in the toes. Off balance, falling in, heavy counter, dead. You need to start with your weight here and drive it forward until you reach here. The heel of the leg is the key for all stability. Okay, and you can see this really easily by looking at a squat. If you're gonna try to do a squat, you wanna be balanced, especially if you're lifting a lot of weight, right? You're not gonna squat like this. With your weight on your toes, you're gonna fall forward, you're gonna wreck your low back. You're gonna squat like that. With your weight on your heels. The human body only really works one way. The way you do one thing is the way you have to do the other thing. Stop that weight in your heel. Now, the angles of the legs are important because you want max rotation. You want, if you don't rotate this leg, even if you have a lot of weight on this leg, you're not getting too much out of your skeleton because your shoulder, your rear shoulder, the one your punch is powering your arm, and your rear hip, the one that is powering your rear arm, are way back there. You want those as close to the front as possible while still being balanced. Okay, so 
that's going to require you to turn your feet. From this position, I'm driving out of my toe and I'm turning that back leg until my toes point towards my front heel. Rear toe should end pointing towards the front heel. And that's going to make this really nice line here. Okay, and now I want to start my rear shoulder in the back as well. For maximum power, there's reasons to start here, but for max power, you want to start here. And I want to rotate that hip and shoulder because they're connected unless your core is off. If your core is on, all that is one piece into the front. And as far into the front as your body allows, as your ligaments allow, because the more loose you are, the more um, mobile you are, you'll be able to move like this. I'm trying to, and I, I don't quite get there, but I'm trying to make a straight line between this hand that I'm punching with and this shoulder behind me. That's my goal. A lot of people think about just pushing this forward. You also have to pull this back. So both sides of the body are working in unison. Legs drive the hips, hips drive the shoulder, and this rhomboid is going to help to pull even further into the front. In getting your full range weight transfer for your cross, starting here, into the front, to there. Sitting into that foot, take that leg off. Are you stable? Are you falling down? Are you falling in? Did you get to the heel? Or are you, are you in the toes? Okay, if you're in the toes, that probably also means that your head has passed that line of your knee. If your head passes your knee line, you're, you're screwed, you're gonna fall over or you're gonna at least be vulnerable to a counter because it's way too hard to maintain strong posture. Rotate from here, weight on your back foot, bang, weight on your front foot, in the heel. Now obviously you can't put 100% of your weight because that would mean you were actually on one foot, right? This foot still needs to remain on the ground with enough weight on it to stop it from lifting off or scooting around. Another thing that I see often when we're talking about uh, the cross especially is people will flip their toes over, right? Instead of rotating like that, I will see a rotation like this. Now that's a real bad habit for obvious reasons. I'm, I'm losing my connection to the ground. One really powerful puncher told me that all your power comes from the ground and I, th I think that's smart because you can't really do anything if you're in the air. Like you can't really move your body at all even if you're in the air. You're kind of just pinwheeling unless you're a cat. That's a whole other subject. We'll talk about that another time. Okay, now we can't just talk about the cross when we're talking about weight transfer because it's not just a one-way street. It's not just going forward. You need to be able to pull it back as well. And in pulling back, that's the hook. And really, this is the one that a lot of people screw up. And yes, commenters, we know there's a billion different ways to throw the hook. There's setups, there's reasons to throw with your weight on the front leg or, or in the middle. But if you want maximum power on your hook, then you're probably going to want to pull back from our cross position, which another thing we should talk about is the hook is a short punch, the cross is a long punch. So if I'm throwing one, two, three, and I throw my one, two like that, I'm never gonna land the hook. It's too close. Okay, so when I throw the cross to set up the hook, I'm gonna throw a short cross. If you don't know what I'm talking about in regards to a short cross, check out the video in the, in the, in the I don't know where we're gonna put it, probably up here, up there or somewhere. Check out that video. Off of our jab, boom, I'm throwing that cross with max rotation, max weight transfer. Boom, short, like that. And now from here, I'm gonna sit back. I sit back to that heel. Bang! 
I bring my weight back into that heel. I don't do as much rotation in the front leg as I do in the back leg. I know a lot of boxers think that you shouldn't rotate this at all. A lot of Thai fighters as well will tell you that because they're too worried about the low kick. If I'm in the range for a power hook like this, it's gonna be pretty hard to low kick me. I'm just not in the range for low kick really. So if you're throwing it in the wrong range, then that makes sense. Now, I want cross there, weight in that heel, rotated forward. Hook, take your weight from that front leg, head right over top of that front knee, and bring it back. Bring it back so your weight is in the back heel. Front leg is super light. And then all of that weight is bang, going right into that hook. The front knee dips. This is how I think about it. As we were talking about for before, trying to get on your cross, get that back hip, back shoulder into the front, right? So what would I have to do for my hook then? Well, probably get the front, the front hip and the front shoulder into the front, right? That would maximize my rotation. Go to here and then back to here. This is already my front shoulder. This is already my front hip. So in order to rotate that directly into the front, because my hips and my shoulders that are somewhat of a 45, right? I don't fight like this, right? I fight like this. That's not gonna take very much. So I don't twist my bottom foot. I just dip my knee like that. I dip my knee in, which I feel is sufficient to bring my left hip directly in front, pointing towards my opponent. My left shoulder directly in front. So that straight line of my shoulders is the same. Straight line of the shoulders here, straight line of the shoulders here. From my short cross, boom, into my, into my three, into my hook, boom. Bringing that hip in front, putting the weight onto the back foot, right? And I probably could have done a little more in order to get onto the back foot. Here's what happened. If you look at where my hips were, my hips are a little tilted here. This hip is a little higher than this hip. Okay, I screwed up. And this is why drilling is so important. You're never perfect. You never make it perfect. You just make it as perfect as you can. Something that I, that I, I apply to all my martial arts is to keep my shoulders and my hips parallel to the ground as often as possible. That's gonna give you the most balance. It's really easy to know this to be true because that's how you live your life. You walk around like that. Try walking around like this, it's super uncomfortable. You walk around with your hips parallel to the ground, your shoulders parallel to the ground. I applied this theory to skateboarding and immediately my skateboarding jumped up like two to three notches because super easy to be balanced if you're like this. Now, we'll talk about skateboarding another time. When I shifted my, when I threw my hook, I let that hip rise a little bit. We need to sit down like that. So now my hips are parallel to the floor and I can feel my weight go more into that back heel than before, which that's a really small shift, but all these small little details really add up. Another thing that I see a lot on the left hook is that lead shoulder being high. Try to really keep those shoulders parallel to the ground. That's gonna give you the best balance that you could have. From my cross, bang, weights on the front leg, shoulders, hips parallel to the ground, rotate your shoulders forward, hip forward, bang, bring the hook back, hips parallel to the ground, shoulder parallel to the ground, weight from the back foot into the front foot, weight from the front foot into the back foot. That is weight transfer and that will make you hit a whole lot harder. fight in MMA like this right now. This is the perfect time to sign up for my pro fight guide. Every single video that I ever release, including the anti-wrestler guide, which is like 70 plus videos. We got the MMA basics course that we're building right now, getting new videos out there every single week. This is my 22 years of MMA experience bottled up in one package. I fought in the UFC. I train elite guys. Ali Wasuk just won the belt. BFL bantamweight champion. If you want to be like this guy, get into this course right now. You also get access to my private community. You'll be able to talk directly to me. Send me things that you're struggling with. Say you're getting armbarred by everybody, getting smashed by wrestlers, you're getting ground and pounded. Whatever the situation is, let me know and I will personally help you. I can send you videos, 
you can send me your training videos, but I'm not letting too many more people in, so get in now before we close it off forever.